Hey, wooden potatoes, great here. I just wanted to give you a quick response about your concerns about uh, the future of Guild Wars 2, uh, especially in the light of the pace of the content and the content being temporary. Now, I do want to say on the onset that I do agree with you in that the systems that they are putting into place for um, delivering the story, they, they were shoehorned into the uh, into the role, and it's not doing doing them any justice, really. So, I do agree that they need to do something better there. I'm not sure what it could be, but uh, yeah, they need to do something. Now, you seem to have three major concerns when it came to uh, the the future of Guild Wars 2. Now, the first one it would be uh, temporary content leading to a uh, lack of investment from the players. And also uh, that rather big stories could not be told with temporary content. Now, I will agree that for the moment, it does look like um, ArenaNet is not doing much when it comes to uh, temporary content uh, giving decent stories. But that isn't a, a, a problem of the form itself. I think it's more of the fact that for ArenaNet, this is something that uh, they're still learning how to use. Now, early on in the video, you said that this was a experimental system. And I don't exactly agree with that. If you go back to the big three of the modern MMOs, the, the, the original three, which I define as Ultima Online, uh, EverQuest, and Ashworld's Call, you'll find that one of those three had promised their customers monthly content updates, and that would be Ashron's Call. Now, Ashron's Call was launched in 1999. So they've been around for about 14 years now. They're still going to this day. In that time, I think Turbines missed all of about seven months worth of content updates. Basically one month every two years. I think even for that was uh, they were putting content uh, updates on hold so they could focus on getting an expansion out the door. I nope, I'm going to address this later, but... Ashland's Call has only had two expansions in those 15 years. Now, I started playing Ashron's Call, oh, I would say, um, about six months after it launched. Uh, so about 13 years ago. And I remember to this day, the first event that I experienced in Ashron's Call. It was the Shadow War. The Shadows being one of the major uh, ra uh, enemy types in Ashron's Call. Now, what the Shadow, uh, shadow War entailed was the, the Shadows were invading. They, they dropped these huge spires over uh, portions of the, of the town, or over towns and portions of, of, the, of the land. And they were going to destroy a town. Uh, th this, this is something that we as players knew was going to happen. In fact, the reason that we knew this was going to happen was because the Shadows were teleporting uh, random players into the Spires and asking them what town should we destroy. They wanted to prove their power to the player base. Now, this was happening in-game. This wasn't like a, a poll outside of the game. This was actually happening to players. And it didn't happen to all the players. It didn't happen to me. But I remember that, you know, hearing the stories from different players that they were teleported into the Spire, the questions that were asked. The very next month, two cities, two of the towns in the game were destroyed permanently. They, they never came back. Um, we just logged in one day, and there were uh, craters where those towns used to be. Now, a month or two later, we destroyed the, uh, the Shadow Spires, and we won the Shadow War. The Spires came crashing to the ground, and for a month or two, um, they, were, they laid broken on the ground for pretty much everyone to, to run by and cheer at. 
and then some of them disappeared, some of the craters were smoothed over, some of the craters still remain. A few months after that, um, it was decided that uh, two, one of the two cities would be rebuilt, and it was rebuilt, but not on the original site. It was actually rebuilt down the road from the devastation that the shadows wrought. Now, the only way that a new player would know any of this is if they either learned it from an old player, such as myself, or if they were to read the, uh, like, any of the wikis or any of the, uh, something on the web about Ashron's call. Now, th that was a pretty powerful story. And I remember it. And it's been 13, 14 years since I played, uh, uh, I, since that story. In fact, it's been about eight years since I played Ashron's Call. And I still remember it to this day. Now, that shows that the, the form of, of quick content updates does not preclude telling large stories that do have an impact on the world itself. Um, in fact, it, it, it's quite, quite the, the opposite, because they, they can say from the onset that anything in the world is temporary. They can change the world in any way that they want from one month to the next. This means that the stories that they tell can have permanence, because if they decide to, to put in some meta event for the entire play, player base where we need to do certain things, or um, you know, if, if we do them, one thing happens, if we don't, and then something else happens, that means that they can change the world based on the overall actions of the player base. You can't do that with permanent content because the content has to remain. Now, the the other thing was was the the portion of player investment, and uh, like I said, I I remember these. I was invested in those stories at that time, and I think it it, it actually um, I was actually more invested because. If I miss something, I knew I missed it, but I, uh, it, it's not like I'm like, oh darn, I'll never see this. It was more of, well, this happened, I know about it from, from my monarchy and from fellow players. It actually helped the community because the community, in a sense, had a an oral history of, of sorts, not quite, but an oral and a written history that, that transcended the, the game world itself, the game client itself. In fact, this is what makes um, sandbox MMOs so compelling, especially if you look at uh, EVE Online. Um, the, the most uh, compelling story in EVE Online is not the story that is created by CCP, it's the story that is created by the players and NullSec, it's the histories of the political intrigue of the players themselves, and that is 100% transitory and temporary. Once it's gone, it's gone. Now, the second issue that you brought up was uh, player content going into the future. That all this content being gone means that when a player, a new player, finishes their, their personal story, if the content were still there and they were asking, what should I do now? We could say, well, you could go do the, the Frost and Flame content and then you could do the Sun Coast content. And the fact that that content no longer exists, I, I agree, means that we can't tell them to, to go do that content. But on the flip side, ArenaNet has promised that they would put out content updates every two weeks for free. Which means when those players finish their personal story, whatever living content was just released in the past two weeks is the answer to that question. We'll tell them, oh, well, now that that you're done with that, here's a little bit of the history of what's gone on with the living story. You might want to check, check this out here. Here's what we saw, and here's where the story is currently, and you can pick up and jump in right here. And the content's there. It's not that they're... They're not 
they're not having a lack of things to do. It's just they're they're not able to do the exact same things that you are able to do, which is perfectly fine. Now the last thing that uh, that you had a concern about was with a lack of expansions. Um, how would ArenaNet signal a change of systems? Now, pardon me a moment here. Now, I think this is more a an issue of player perception than it is with an actual problem with the system itself. And the reason I say that, and I'm going back to Ashran's call, is that in AC, we had many systems changes over, over the years before the first expansion. I believe we got uh, player ho housing before the first expansion. Um, the way that inventory and weight uh, was done ch was changed. Um, items actually had uh, weight in National's Call. In fact, currency had weight in National's Call, which is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, until that was changed, that made it really interesting. Anyway, we as players knew that these changes came into effect without expansions. And the reason for that is because, as Hashron's call players, we were not expecting expansions. So, as Guild Wars 2 players, if we're aware that they're putting out new content every two weeks, and that new content has the possibility of system changes, then we will grow. We will grow. Um, grow accustomed to the fact that there may be system changes at any time, and I personally think that is really, really good for us as, as players. The reason for that is because with paid MMOs, if the the system changes are tied to expansions. And I had a problem with way that, uh, the way that the systems were playing. The only way that I would know if the changes that they made addresses the problems that I have is to buy the X-Pack. I have to invest more money to find out if, if I want to play again. Even though I was a paying customer before, this always really annoyed me about, about MMOs that follow this model. New players could get free time existing uh, customers that you know may have played your game for years oh to hell with them you don't get any free time you either pay or you do without that's not so in the free to play space or in the the uh, you know purchase one uh, model that arena net has with guild wars 2 so if we know that there are system changes and i know that as as a guild wars 2 player and I stop because I'm annoyed with some system in Guild Wars 2. I also know that going into the future, there may be uh, changes that I can look into at any time. All I have to do is patch my client, log in, and there they are. I, my characters are there. I can pick up right where I left off and, uh, and see if those changes really do address the concerns that I had. So... The fact that the majority of MMOs tie system changes mostly to sure. expansions really is a it really is a perception problem, and I think it's one that we as Guild Wars Two players, we know that ArenaNet does things differently than other companies, which means we're aware, or we can become aware, of these system changes. So it's a non-issue. Anyway, I hope this. Uh, addresses some of your concerns, and even if you do not agree with it, that it gives you something to think about, um, you know, and a, and a different perspective of what's going on, especially in light of the fact that a lot of what ArenaNet is doing with these content updates is something that has been done for, for years, over a decade, by Turbine with Atron's Call. So it's really something that... Uh, we can look to Ashron's call and see how their player base reacts to that, and we can see, hey, they've been going for 14 years. If Guild Wars 2 is going for 14 years, we have content updates for those 14 years. I can think of worse, uh, you know, worse things to happen to an MMO. Anyway, have fun. <laughs>